British India, 1947. The people of this region have struggled for freedom from British rule in a conflict that has lasted for almost 100 years. The people of India and their rulers, the British, are trying to find a way to resolve their conflicts. They are searching for a compromise. The main groups experiencing conflict are the British, Indian Muslims, and the Indian Hindus. The representatives of the British Empire in India are Viceroy Louis Mountbatten and British Barrister or Attorney Cyril Radcliffe. The representatives of the Indian Hindus leaders of a group called the Indian National Congress are Jawaharlal Nehru and Mohandas Gandhi. The representative of the Indian Muslims, the leader of a group called the All Indian Muslim League, is a man named Muhammad Ali Jannah. Hinduism was born on the Indian subcontinent between 1700 BCE and 1500 BCE, and has been the most prominent religion there ever since. Islam, the religion practiced by Muslims, was brought to India by Arabs who invaded the area with their armies and controlled the Indus Valley by 724 CE. From 700 CE until 1858 CE, various people of India were ruled by different Muslim governments. By the 1800s, the Indian subcontinent was a mixture of Hindus and Muslims. Historical records show a long history both of violent and nonviolent conflicts between the Muslim and Hindus of the religion, beginning with the first invasions by the Arabs. By 1500 CE, India had been trading with Europe for more than a thousand years. Spices and other goods from India were very valuable in Europe. During the 1500 CE, the British East India Company developed a strong connection with India through trade. The British East India Company would pay local rulers money in exchange for the right to trade in their kingdoms. The British East India Company took advantage of wars between Indian rulers by giving support to the rulers who would give the company the most power in their region. As the power of the British East India Company increased, many Indians began to fear and hate the British presence in the region. This conflict eventually led to a large Indian rebellion called the Sepoy Mutiny in 1857. The British government sent its own troops to support the British East India Company. The soldiers crushed the native rebels, dissolved the British East India Company, and took rule of India. In 1858, the re region became known as British India. The people of India resented the British taking over their country, their resources, and their people. Indians spent decades unsuccessfully fighting for freedom using violence against a far stronger British Empire. The Indians finally began to find success in 1915 under the leadership of Mohandas Gandhi, who used peaceful means of rebellion such as civil disobedience. From 1915 until the start of World War II, Mohandas Gandhi's method of using peaceful means of protest against Indian occupiers, the British, was working. The British began giving into many of the demands of the Indian people because they did not want to look bad to the people of the world for fighting Indians that were not using violence against them. Further, Britain was nearly destroyed in World War II, and the expenses of the war left them with very little money. The combination of peaceful protests by the Indians and a lack of money to support their Indian colony caused the British to seek compromise with the Indians. A compromise that would lead the Indians' independence by giving their region back to the Indian people was not going to be simple. Compromise would be necessary between the British government and the two main groups in India group that already had a long history of conflict, the Hindus and the Muslims. 
The group that had been most responsible for resisting the British was the Indian National Congress. The Indian National Congress was led by Mohandas Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru. Both men were Hindus, but they believed they were fighting for all Indians, and they believed that the British India should remain as one whole nation after the British left. Indian Muslims, however, did not feel like they were being represented for the Indian National Congress. Further, Muslims were worried that they would be persecuted in a country that was both led by Hindus and where Hindus were by, by far the bigger group. The Muslims formed their own group to compromise with the British. The group was called the All Indian Muslim League. A lawyer named Muhammad Ali Jinnah was chosen as the leader of the group. The representative for the British Empire in India was a Viceroy Louis Mountbatten. After negotiating for many months with both the Indian National Congress and the All Indian Muslim League, he decided on a compromise. India would be given its independence in order to satisfy the Indian National Congress. Parts of India would be divided and given to the Muslim people. The new area would be ruled by Muslims to satisfy the All India Muslim League. Once the handover to power took place, the British, their leaders, and the troops would leave immediately, satisfying Britain's need to save money and resources. Viceroy Mountbatten gave the job of drawing the boundaries of the new independent nations to a British barrister named Sal Radcliffe. By the summer of 1947, Sal Radcliffe had finished drawing the boundaries of the two new nations. On August 15, 1947, the British Empire handed power back to the people of India. A new nation was born, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The name Pakistan was formed from the letters of the areas that made up the region, Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, Sindh, and Baluchistan. The letter I was added to the middle to make the name easier to pronounce. In the language Urdu, the national language of Pakistan, the name means pure country. Almost immediately after handing over power to the government of India and Pakistan, the Uyghurs began leaving the region. Unfortunately, the compromise that was made between the British and the Muslim and Hindu Indians did not lead to the end of the conflict. Despite Sauer Radcliffe's best effort, the boundaries he drew dividing India and Pakistan left 7 million Hindus on the Pakistan side and 7 million Muslims on the Indian side. The mass migration of these people led to over a million deaths due to violence and starvation. Further, Sauer Radcliffe did not clearly draw to which side Indian or Pakistani the region of Kashmir belonged. As a result, both sides are still fighting over control of the region to this day. Finally, when Sauer Radcliffe drew the boundaries for the nation of Pakistan, he split the country into two regions, a western region and an eastern region. Over time, the eastern region did not feel like it was being well represented by the Pakistani government, which was located in the western region. As a result, the people of the eastern region went to war against the people of the western region. The eastern region won the war, separated itself from Pakistan, and now is the nation of Bangladesh. The troubled history of the Indian subcontinent shows how easy it is for groups with different backgrounds, religions, customs, and goals to come to the conflict. The compromise that came about after World War II required just the right people acting at just the right time. The conflict that has continued in decades after India and Pakistan gained their independence from Britain shows that compromise between different groups of people cannot just happen one time in order to be successful. Compromise needs to be continued forever.